Today we're fishing out of Oswego Harbor in upstate New York. We're about an hour from Syracuse, four hours from New York City. We're trolling for browns. It's early in the season. The ice just left, or the you know the cold, the warm is just starting to set in. The browns are coming in on shore. Um, we're trolled in anywhere from seven to 20 feet of water, running lines in the top 10, five to 10 feet of the water column, targeting these brown trout. They're coming in this time of year to feed. We ran a combination of uh, spoons and stick baits, light line, it's fun fishing. It's a lot of action. Um, when they're biting, it's fun. There's big numbers of fish around. Oh, here we are, Chris. Oh, he's jumping out there. You saw him? Yep, just came up to the top out there. Our first bite here, we just set up a little while ago. Trolling out here outside the Oswego Harbor. You see the break walls in the background. You're you got it? Yep. Come here, buddy. Oh, I walked forward. He didn't want that one. <laughs> Over two. I know what I'm doing. Weird. As I'm walking forward, I'm pushing them back. All right. Come here, buddy. You gotta get off a little farther. We we're talking about it's gonna be a little tougher to answer that. We can do it. Got it. And we can. All right, Chris, here's the rewards from our bite. It's a nice two year old brown trout. They put him in last year, about third week of May, six to eight inches long, about average when they stock them. And uh, they grow fast here in Lake Ontario. Well, I just hit one here, Chris. Right in my favorite little honey hole. Early in the year, those fish, they like the walls. Creates a little current shooting between the, the break walls. And I like to hold them here in this corner, we call it. This one here is on a. Oh, we got we got a double. Uh, I think I slowed down. Are you tangled? Oh, uh oh. What would you like me to do? Let's get this fish. Normally, you really like to hear that noise, but not today. That's that's bottom. <laughs> oh, I feel like hearing it. Oh boy. And you're in between three lines. Oh yeah. We're in that one. This is what I tell you. Today was gonna be- When it rains, it pours, baby. I told Andy it'll be fun if it's just the two of us. Fun for who? For you making fun of me. Who's on? Got him. Here's our, uh, another brown here we caught. This is our, you know, another two year old, the one we stocked last year. You know, he's not as thick as the one we caught earlier, but still put up a good fight. He's still find me. He caught, he caused us a lot more problems than the first one. Well, Chris, we went back through, we hit that last one, get our spoon off the bottom, which it worked, and we're rewarded with another bite. You find a pot of fish, a lot of times they'll kind of congregate in an area, whether it's warmth, creek mouth, just there's some food there. If you find them, stay on them. So here he is, Chris. You know, it's another, like I said, two-year-old stock last year. Right now, they're not super big, you know? I mean, this fish probably 15 inches. So the gear we use today chasing these browns is uh, a light rod, nine footer, paired with a 500 size reel. We like the Dakotas from Shimano. Um, this Claris rod's nice, nine foot medium light action. Um, and then we paired that with some P-Line, uh, 10 pound main line. And we also ran a couple with a one color lead core with P-Line fluorocarbon. So the two baits we use the most today were Stinger Spoons, in a standard size, this here being the Lance's Two-Face. This one took us a few bites once we added him when the sun came out. And the other bait of choice was a four and a half inch Smithwick Rattle and Rogue. It's a floating model, it doesn't dive too much, has a small bill, but it's just under the surface. Those fish can come up and grab it and it has a great wobbling action that those browns really like. The two um, scents we used today anchovy and herring. These two are my favorites when we're chasing browns this time of year. And they both can work at the same time. Some days are very picky. So I like starting with both and figuring out which they like. Today, they both worked. Guys, I'm gonna show you the herring fire gel that we use today. Now I'm gonna show you how I apply this to my lures. So I take a little bit. What I like doing, just get it right in that cup. You can see there's still a little some there. So because of that little bit of a cup, it kind of sits in that little cove there and holds on and just slowly disperses. And then if we go to like a stick bait, just rub it right down their back, right on the sides. So as you can see, it doesn't change the color, but it stays on there and it kind of comes off and they can leave a little scent trail for those fish to pick it up, especially in that dirty water that we're fishing today. Well, Chris, I think we found them. This is the cool thing about this time of year. When you find a pocket of them, they get together, like I told you earlier, so. 
This one here is on the left side with the anchovy. That's the other thing this time here. They're really good eating. Ooh. He's a little thicker. Oh, Chris, here's, oh, he just like, oh. Oh. Trying to get this one out of the net. We just I missed saw that one. bite. Like I said, I think I think we found him, Chris. We're on him now. Like I said, we just scooped this one and we had another one pulling on our outside board. So we'll let him go. Like I said, though, if you want to come up and catch some good eating fish, these spring browns are delicious. Let's let him go to get bigger. Well, like we said, they're here. We had a real great bite window earlier. We caught a bunch of fish in about an hour. We took, I don't know, five, six bites. And we went about an hour with nothing. Then we just landed one. We had another rod go. He didn't stick. And uh, whacked another one as soon as that one missed it. So. I see the motor. I want to see the fish. Fish! We're in the net. <laughs> like yeah, said, and look at look what just happened. Hook popped out. Fish, fish, fish! Oh, oh my god! We got another one! Go. I can't even get this in my hand! <laughs> Here, you gotta get it! Alright. Get it, get it! Hurry up! Hurry up! <laughs> <laughs> got him! Got him! Oh, there's a look at that! Folks. I don't know who gets more excited when that, they bite. That's what I can't. All I want to see is the bite. Anybody that trolls knows that when that rod just goes. You just, it's, it's fun. It's fun. And look at that, folks. That's how it's done, folks. Welcome to Oswego, where the Browns are here. Woo! Here it is, Chris. Now you see this brown, it's a nice big, uh, looks like a hen. I mean, it has a little bump there, but this one here spawned out. You can tell she's not real fat. She's not that typical football you always hear about here in the Great Lakes. So you can see this one, Chris, here is a little fatter. It's more your typical football shape you hear about up here. So we let him go to get even bigger. The average size fish this time of year is going to be two to five pounds, but you have a chance at an eight to 15 pound fish anytime. Um, you know, those two to three pounders make up a large majority of our catch, but you have a lot of uh, fish that are returning from their fall spawn that are out there and you can catch a few of them mixed in. And you also have some that didn't go that are big and fat and just waiting for you to catch them. So, um, Oswego County is a great place to come visit. We have great fishing anywhere from ice out, which is usually mid-March right through uh, mid-May for these browns. So come on up here and enjoy some great fishing and some really good eating. These fish are make great table fare. You really enjoy it. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.